This podcast is brought to you by Steed Motor Group, Clare Galway. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, find out more at steedmotorgroup.ie. So delighted now to be joined by two former Galway Herders in Kevin Brady and Connor Jervin to look ahead to the opening round of action in the Senior and Intermediate Hurling Championships. Uh, the games take place across Friday, Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Before we get into the action, Connor, any memories of playing hurling with Kevin? No. <laughs> hey, you've been recorded now, Dermot. <laughs> I do indeed. <laughs> I think we played Cylon um, in a challenge in, I think it was over in Mulya. And uh, this little busy bonnet around the middle <laughs> of the field and mouthing, giving out. But no one could lay, lay a hand on him. I, I'd never heard or, see, or, or, heard or, or seen of him before. I think it was up under 16, Kevin. You were just coming with a bit of a team at the time. Yeah, with a team that time, yeah. Yeah, let's say it would have been my, actually no, it would have been my second last year under 16. Yeah. Mm. And you looked about a 12-year-old abroad in the field, but still hurled the whole fucking place. <laughs> 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 so that was my first. I remember that ha- that happened. But on, that was my first introduction in then. Sure, we had um, county under 16 and then county minor sure, with John Hardy. Were you three years minor, Kevin, were you? Yeah, three years, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. And, uh, sure, yeah, sure, we had uh, lots of uh, training ground battles and lots of... He's a, look, he was about the man to have with you in the Nguyen, that's for sure. You, you, you knew he was going to fight and he's back. You know, I actually only seen the All-Ireland minor final. Um, someone brought it up in front of me on YouTube oh, maybe t- three or four months ago now. I see Brady and he absolutely let him fly you know, under the Hogan stand. <laughs> Your man put the oh, boot. <laughs> took the leg of David Hayes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He caught Hayes, actually. That's right. He caught Hayes and he's hopping around the place afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, no, no. Kevin was top class. Uh, left, right, speed, uh, aggression. You know, he, uh, he's a good lad to have. Do you have any memories then, Kevin and Connor? Loads. I couldn't share half of them, but I, I, I'll share one of with the crack. This um, is PG rated now, Kev. <laughs> like, he had a hand, like, <laughs> you know, like no one else, he, he could put it up. I say when Connor was 16, he, he stopped growing. He was six foot one at that time. He was huge. Um, but I can remember when Hardy brought us in, like, we we're only kids, but we we're still 16, 17, 18. We we're thought we were big, tall men, but, you know, Hardy had a crew and that time he'd body and, uh, John Mylan and, and um, Michael Murray. Michael Murray from uh, Sarsfield's a gas man. He'd just say it straight out. Put it like this, he wouldn't be allowed in, in uh, the Limerick dressing room now. <laughs> 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 but I can remember Dervin, you know, we had a name for him. We just call it Dervin. And Dervin, and we'd arrive in and it was with a gear on us and we tentatively looking around. I would have come Durban anyhow, just a pair of socks and nothing else on him, and he'd walk around like he owned the place. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael Murray says, Will you put a top on yourself? I have more <laughs> hair on my face. <laughs> Do you remember them doing Durban? I was doing um, it to Dix Murray. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, as in regard, character, top class, as a uh, hurler, you know, great club man. and couldn't say enough about him and his brother and listen, his father and his sister and all them and all is said about them. I'd say there's some uh, great stories there that couldn't be told to some people as well. <laughs> that we all uh, love this see. platform anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we did good catch up actually there a couple of years ago with the 20 years of the minor team. Was, uh, yeah, great yeah. to see all the lads, yeah. Yes, we uh, had a room in the Lockery Hotel now and um, we'd big turnout for two now, so it was, it was good to catch up with how, how everybody was and what lads were doing and, you know, everyone kind of had still their, their next look in some part of Hurland, so it was good to see, you know. It was, and just on, just touching on that, Connery, when you said it there, you know, uh, just in the late Barry Cohn, you know, um, like, yeah. it's all right and laughing and everything, like he's, you know, just one of our teammates is not around anymore. It's, it, it touches home when you when you go back and you look at all the memories we had when you see a face to face crossing a phone and we're going through the the good times and we're there at his funeral as well and it was it was tough, you know, tough on Barry and his family oh, as well. Yeah. And you know, leave it at that. Yeah. Absolutely a, a, a lovely tribute there, uh, by Kevin and I'm, I'm sure there's some great stories uh during your career. Um but 
We are here to touch on the senior championship, but actually just before I do that, uh, just from everyone who's been associated with the Maroon and White pod, I'd like to extend our condolences to Sarsfields and Jimmy Cooney and his family uh, on the sad passing um, today. Uh, a man who contributed so much um, to the GA. So, yeah, well, Paul, yeah. Condolences just, from Sarsfields. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. The family. Just your condolences there. But, uh, Connor, for your for yourself, there, um, you're obviously with Mulia for a few years there. Are you missing it at all? Championship week now coming up this week. Is there is there a bit of a bug where you would have been like, oh, I'd still like to be involved? Or is it very much uh, you're you're happy to be out of it now? Um, yeah. So you wouldn't miss too much in the, this month of July, just gone now and all that bloody rain, <laughs> you know. But um. Yeah, look, I'll be I'll be checking in there with the brother the whole time now. So there's a bit of a buzz starting to come um, about it, and yeah, you'd be I suppose you'd be a little bit nostalgic thinking back of the few games and what you'd be trying to do this week and trying to pull things together and um, you know you'd be wishing and hoping and praying for one good thing and bad things for others. You know yourself. <laughs> but, uh, um, now the other side of it is, you know, I've been back there playing a bit of junior and. You know the, the, the lads have been struggling with a few injuries here and there, and you know I, I had the same situation last year. You know and you're trying to get a panel game together now, and you're you'd be hoping for 26 or you know 24, 26 bodies, and you're probably down to 18 some evenings, and you know it can be frustrating, and just you just kind of have to roll with the punches and try and keep the spirits going and all that. So yeah, there'd, there'd be there'd, there'd be more to miss than than wouldn't you know? But um, yeah, but look at the same time, happy enough that. I mean, three years then done with them now, and you know, I think, you know, the lads, they, they, they've they seem to have kicked on again a bit this year. Um, Skins, M. Dunham, and um, Derek Hardy are joint trainers, so it's a, a lot of experience there, and a, 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 a very proud Mulliam. And so, um, the the guys seem to be responding to them, and um, you know, if they can get close to their full fifteen on the field any day I think I've said on this before they'll, they'll, they'll give most teams a, a fair rattle you know and um, yeah but they'll just need they'll need that little bit of luck with the injuries you now just to just to give them that bit of strength and depth when things when things start pushing on Just before uh, we do get into the previews and our predictions uh, for this weekend I'm going to put you both on the spot straight away and Kevin who's going to win the Tom Callaghan Cup this year? Not great why? I just think they're a year down the line. I see they brought Brian Mann in with them. They have a backroom ter- team there as good as a county setup. Um, they look like the Lock Grey of old, but a fitter Lock Grey. That's no disrespect to the old Lock Grey because they were animals. But these seem to have something. Um, you know, um, I see Friday there is doing the fr- um, doing all the coaching with them, and they have just a serious backroom team. They brought on an awful lot of that young team through. Um, got to a county semi final last year. Um, semi final it was, wasn't it? They were pipped by Clare and Bridge. I just think they'll win the county title I, for some reason. Um, there's not a lot being said about them. Oh, I know I'm talking about them here, but um, I just think Thomas's road without David Burke is just a step too far. Now, we'll get into that in a while. There's pros and cons to that, but. If it was given a, if there was a gun put to my head, I'd say um, Lock Ray have now. And Connor? Yep, yeah, it'd be Lock Ray for me as well, um, for all the same reasons as Kevin said. Um, I saw them last year, four times, quarter final, semi final in the, in the, the replays. Um, they just, they don't seem to have anything, they don't seem to be missing anything. And um, I suppose a little bit of inexperience last year, you know, with a few of the players. You know, and um, the run they had last year, you know, that's going to stand to them this year. Um, you know, and again, Thomas, is, they can't stay going forever, you would imagine. But I, I say that very reluctantly. Um, any team could pull another one out of the bag to be them because they have a an almost a, a telepathic understanding of how they play the game together and how they manage to dig out results, you know. So, but yeah, David Bork is going to be a big, a big loss to that, um, that group. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, you have McManus there in Lockray, you have young Morgan, cornerback, he had a good year last year. Um, Jamie Ryan, you know, they have speed. 
they have got a little bit more experience and, and they seem to have strength. And, and again, what, uh, what Kevin alluded to with the backroom team, they they have a structure uh, to have everything right and everything in place. And um, they're, they're ticking every box. They're, 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 they really are um, putting their shoulders to the wheel as a club to try and get, you know, get another county final over the line for them. And if I um, was putting 50 quid on anyone now tomorrow morning, it would be like, right. Yeah, they they really do seem to be fancy them. We'll get in more about Lock Ray and who they're placing this weekend. But we're gonna focus on the senior Ireland championship group one. Um and we're gonna start off with that game on Saturday between Clarenbridge and Oran Mary at uh, six forty five. Kevin, before the club championship, there's always a fascination. What players are there? Has a high profile coach been brought in? Niall Moore and a Limerick uh being brought in by David Forge coaching Clarenbridge this year. It, it does really feel like this this could be a big addition for the bridge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if I'm being truthful, the bridge were always sort of known as a nice team, softish in a, and I don't mean that in in a naive way. Um, like Gray being more of a cutthroat team. Now, with Fordy gone in with them, uh, Clarenbridge last year, I've seen them in a couple of games, they seem to have a bit of steel about them. You know, they have the best free taker in the country in Ireland. Um, Fordy will have them fit he'll have them drilled well good coach experience in McGalway big club man um, there's there's a lot of expectation on Clarence Bridge this year and it's a local derby now with Orm Moore Orm Moore have nothing to lose um, all the pressure is on Clarence Bridge if they don't win this game by 7-8 points they're saying they're not good enough if they win it by 1 or 2 points or Moore aren't too bad that's no disrespect to Orm Moore um, Clarenbridge need need a huge starting game um, this weekend, and I think if or more come all guns blazing, I don't think they'll beat them, but they'll give them plenty of it. You know, if they leave it to a game of freeze, Nyland will just destroy them. You know, physically or more a very very big team, um, but it's a nice game for Clarenbridge to get their their game off, you know, their campaign off. Uh, just on that as well, Oshin Salmon, he's obviously out with the cruciate injury. He picked it up with Galway at the start of the year, so he, he won't be available anyways for the foreseeable future, but um, he might might defy the odds and get back at some stage, but it probably is unlikely at the minute. With Clemridge, there's, there's a nice balance there between experience and youth. Uh, the likes of Gavin Lee now coming coming along with the likes, obviously, of Evan Island and TJ Brennan. Who are with Galway, and then you have the, the dailies, obviously, as an Alan Armstrong stalwart to Clarenbridge at this stage. Connor, where do you see Clarenbridge? Uh, Clarenbridge for me, probably um, just behind Lockeray. I think if they avoid each other, I think they'll probably um, meet in the county final. Um, I've seen them a couple of times last year. Um, they, they, again, they, have to, they seem to have taken a lot of boxes, um, the guys' pace. Um, forty and Ray Hayes is there as well. Ray is a good lad, and um, I'm bringing in Nile Morton. Forty won't leave any stone on un- unturned, trying to make sure he gets that extra couple of percent out of them. Um, thought it was a bit. Now, one thing I didn't agree with last year, I've seen TJ Brennan up in the forwards with them. Uh, now, obviously, I'm not with Clarence Bridge and don't know the ins and outs of each player there, but TJ Brennan for me could be one of the outstanding threes or sixes in. The club scene, like, um, I think you know, I'd be very much get your get your spine right first, and you build it from the back up, you know, not from the top down. And um, you know, I'd be surprised if he's not there to lynch the whole lot together. Um, at six, maybe, maybe three as well. Um, but yeah, Clare and Bridger, they're 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 a good team, going places. They've they've um, they, they have a lot of numbers coming through as well. So there's there's pressure there to maintain and. Try and keep your place. There'll be a lot of players looking over their shoulder. They'll have options on the line. Uh, Ocean Salmon is a, a big loss, in all fairness. But um, yeah, with Nyland there as well, you know, he is the finest free taker in the country, bar none. So he, if he gets 10, 12 frees a game, you know, if he misses one, it believes as much as going to happen, you know, and that's, that's a serious weapon to have in club championship, especially if you're coming into bad weather, wet evenings, you know, it's. Um, you know, and, and with the way the refereeing has gone and gone the two, if I'm honest, it's um, you know, there's a bag of whistles being swallowed by most referees, I think, before they go. So, 
That's, uh, especially in the early parts of the championship as well. Fair enough, get to semi final and final. There's more of a spectacle, you know, asked, you know, to be made. Um, but early championship, I remember last year, I think we had a stat last year. I think there was something like, I think there was 40 something frees in one game. It was just absolutely ridiculous. Like, and if there was genuinely 20 in it, it would have been enough, you know. So, but look, that's what you're up against. You mentioned there, Kevin, you expect or more to give them a rattle. It's it's a local derby. The, the Clare Minor manager, um, Brian O'Connell, he's actually living in Ormore and he's in he's in coaching them this year. It was a poor year last year. They definitely will uh, expect a better year this year now from an Ormore perspective. He will, yeah. Um, like, they have a lot, a lot of good young players coming, but like, there's a lot of them that have played the dual code and it's very, very hard in them clubs. You know, I see Mike Cullen as well. I, I played as a dual player. It's very, very hard for them dual clubs. I see Monave Abbey as well. Um, credit to them, you know, that can do it at the top level in hurling and football. Um, but to get the best of them is early in the year, you know. So I think uh, Clarenbridge will win it by five or six points. That's my honest opinion. Um, but if they get in, if they can bring them down, there's a great coach that's been one time, you know, he was a boxing coach, John Herty, you know, when they want to scrap you a box, when when you want to box, let them scrap, just change it up with them. Because Clarenbridge will play a nice game if you let them, they play the fast, fast run game, you know, um, and 40 will have them well drilled on that. Everything will go through Nyland, you know, and TJ Brennan, and they'll work the team around that, as as, as Durbin said. But, you know, you've, um, you've Niall there for, and you have GMAC and you have a few more lads and, you know, big names, big names. The club needs them the next day now. Um, upset the neighbours two miles in the road. Big ask for them. But it's a, it, it's a great start to get for them. Yeah, I'm not sure what the story with TJ Brennan is. He has been hurling in America in the summer. So it'd be interesting to see will he be back or not mm. um, for this one. Uh, do you see Clambridge winning this, Connor? Um, well, if TJ is not there, that's... Would go a long way to give Nord more a fair crack at. Um, if they say Cambridge have had TJ, in, I'm not too sure that the, 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 the any any other injuries they have outside of Bushy and Salmon. Um, on paper, yeah, I give them a five or six point, um, a five or six point win on it. Um, but if there's any day you can be caught, it's going to be the first day out. You know, a lot of teams are shadow boxing. You don't really know how well you're going until after your first game or your second game. And, um, yeah, I'd give one more fighting chance, though. This is just a great thing, lads, when you look back at the old structure and you look at six teams and you look at the overlap between Senior A and Senior B. These games, like, they're, they're, there's no room for error this weekend. Like, if, if you lose straight away in this, Kevin, you're under pressure. There's, there's games at stake, even if you compare it to the football, there's... A six team group, another six team group, a five team group like this. This is straight away at stake. It's it's proper championship hurling without knockout the first day, which is the old traditional style. Um, like it's where you'd want to be. It really is. It'll test every team. If you're good enough, you're good enough. Um, if you lose the first day, it's proper championship then. If you win, you know you want to kick on and you want to top your group. Um. It's a it's a banana skin for Clare and Bridge the next day, and it's it's a massive game for Orm Moore. But I can see Clare and Bridge winning it, and that's even without TJ Brennan. That's no disrespect to Orm Moore, very physical team. But I just think the classier team, the county finest last year, any ambition at all, I think they'll be pulling away at the end of this one. The other game in that group is Sunday evening. Uh, Tommy Larkins, Climber Daily, quarter past five, Duggan Park. Do you give Climber Daily the advantage here when you consider the injuries Tommy Larkins have at the minute, Connor with Jason Flynn, obviously, and Ronan Murphy? Jason uh, Flynn's definitely out, and Ronan Murphy's struggling, so it's hard to know is he back or not. Yeah, with, with, with them two, it is like Jason Flynn is, you know, probably with uh, Connor Cooney, he's probably going to be the outstanding club hurler forward anyway in Galway for, for the last few years. He's a huge loss for Tommy's. Um, irreplaceable, to be honest about it. Um, wasn't didn't know about Ronan Murphy, but if he's out as well or, or doubtful, yeah, you'd give Climber Daly a proper proper chance on that one. I'd be giving Climber Daly a chance on that anyway. Um, uh, an unusual bunch to Climber Daly guys, like they're only over the road from 
from from us here in Mulgalek, but you'd never hear how they're going really. Do, do they play their challenges outside of Galway or what? But it's very hard to get a read in them. You know, you, you turn up then some days play a challenge and they're 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 ready to go. <laughs> the minute they hit the field, they're they're always up for the up for the scrap, like up for the battle. Would you have great? Would you have great admiration for Clamour Daly? I I would, yeah. They're they're uh, a resilient bunch, I suppose. To to, to put it mildly, there'll like, be no hatred there. Sorry, there'll be no hatred there, Anton. <laughs> no, I don't, no don't think so. I don't know. I mean, don't say that, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of me <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, I've had uh, we've, we've all had some tough battles at Clamour Daily but, um, down through the years they don't stand back um, they, they, they kind of circle the wagons fairly quick down there when things are not going their way you know, so yeah they, they, and look, look, look at the results the past few years they've, they've put it up to Thomas's on a couple of occasions they've, they've, they've given some big teams some major frights, you know down, down the last few years um, you know, Brian Concannon there obviously is he's moving fairly well so a lot of Brian Burke is still an outstanding free taker in the club championship oh, outstanding well. yeah, yeah he's a super hurler like um, his uh, skill levels are, are up there but the very best of whatever has gone through Galway hurling in the last few years um, nice fella too um, but yeah look Climber Daly it's a it's a it's a massive opportunity you know Jason Flynn out you know I can see them going hard after this one get this win under their belts and um you know, they'll fence their chances against Orton Moore as well, you know. And they won't be standing back in Clarence Bridge either, but you know, they'll, 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 have, they'll have a chance there, you know, qualification to uh, start the first day. Do you think this is one they'll target, Kevin? Yeah, well, listen, it can work both ways. Larkins can go out and try and win it for uh, Jason, their guy, club hurler, which, um, you know, we would have done down through the years for one of our stalwarts. So there could be an extra, as I say, if you get an extra 2% out of each of these lads, it's an extra 30% in the game. That's only an extra hooker block. It's not a lot to ask. Um, I'd be going with Larkins. I just think they're a hardened, hardened team. Um, I can't see them winning a county title, even with Jason Flynn. But they're just one of these teams, you know. It's not that they bring it down to their level because they're a right good hurling team. Um, they're a real traditionist. They're hair, they're tough, and they're super fit. Um, even without Flynn, I just think that Larkins will win it. Um, yeah, it doesn't I, really feel like there's going to be much between Tommy Larkins reading. No. Tommy. Probably both yeah. of those games and those groups, there's not going to be much between them. Um, group two is safe to say group of death. Um, I don't think we can say otherwise. For Tumna, Sherlock Moore and Gordon Thomas's. For Tumna and Turlock uh, meet this Friday in Dublin Park at half seven. Um, the game of the weekend, Connor, like here you have Turlock Moore, which every year it starts out in the senior championship. There's expectation there, there's fight there with Turlock Moore. And probably safe to say there's this perception maybe around Port Tumna that maybe they're finished, they're they're an old team, but they're they're really not because like if you look last year, they won an under twenty B, they have the likes of Declan McLaughlin and Jack Canning and these players coming through, as well as like Ron O'Mara and Joe Canning in your team, you'll always have a chance. Yeah, no, um uh Port Humble are far from finished. Uh, the, 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 if you even look at the Starsis game last year, we played them in the group game. And as I was talking just before we went live here, like we, we were what, eight, nine, ten points up with a, with a with a with with an extra man, and um, they, they, they the more it's holders off the field for the entire second half, you know. So, you know, there's there's a there's streetwise they they know they know what they're about. Um, you know, they have good scoring forwards. They'll, they'll be fit. No, I was talking to Kevin Hayes there earlier today. Um, Connor Hare, I think, has transferred. Uh, down to Crokes, down in Clary, I think he'll be a big loss. Now he was he was outstanding fullback for them last year, and um, Andy Smith has retired as well. So he's a big voice around. Not only he's hurling his physicality and all that, but uh, he's a big voice around the dressing room to be missing. So you know they'll need obviously they'll have Joe and they need a couple of other guys to take up that leadership role that he he he'll have left vacant. But um, Torlocked in on the other side, it was shocks with them this year. So. Shocks are going to have them wound up anyway, that's for sure, you know. Um, the, 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 I don't... I'd probably be going on the side of Portomola for this one. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah, reason being, 
seen Torlock a couple of times last year, and they don't seem to have a huge scoring threat going forward. They're, they're, they're very good from six to six to eight, and they find horrors going in the forwards, but they don't look like they're out and out scoring. You know, one they're not having seem to have a player that's going to score one four one five that you can hang your hat on every game. You know, and I just think Bertomna with, with Lachlan, Joe, and um, a couple of them other lads, I'd, I'd give Bertomna maybe a one point win in that one. Evan, you mentioned off air before we came on. It's the game you're really looking forward to this weekend. Yeah, I go up to that one on Friday evening. You know, uh, pros and cons in both. Um, Bertomna are never finished. Okay, they're not going to win all Ireland's or maybe county titles for the next couple of years, but they're going to be very competitive. You know, you see Joe hanging around still. Um, Joe's won it all. He's not there to win any more county titles. He's there to bring the next generation through. He's brought his nephew through, and now they're bringing McLaughlin and all these guys through. And it's what a legacy to leave, you know, just to be for them guys to talk out, you know, with Joe. And it's not just about Joe, but even Andy Smith and Chunky and all of these guys, you know, they've left such a legacy. These young players looked up to them when they were winning all Ireland. Going on the Turlock side of it, my own cousin Darren is over with them shots and, you know, he left them wound up. But wound up is grand, you know, and I'm all up for being wound up. But, you know, you know, get wound up against the wrong crew and you get wound up against Port Tumna because they're the masters. They're like Thomases of Camness, you know. It goes back to the old adage of, you know, they'll fight when you want to box and box when you want to fight. You've got to be able to, you've got to be able to pick your fights wisely with these guys. Um, uh, you know, Sean Loftus is out. He broke his shoulder in a challenge match the other evening, last weekend. And, you know, they have a couple of more niggles now, but I do expect Turlock to win it. They're going well. I've seen them training a few times this year. I've seen a couple of games they've played. Um if a couple of young players have to come in through, young Killian Trayers, I like him. I've seen him win the minor. He played under 20, under 20 this year, number six. Um, you know, Sean Lennon this year, a huge year of Galway, as in terms, you know, came out of nowhere, had a good league, didn't think he was going to uh, be left there with Galway. But he was probably one of Galway's better players. He really was very impressed with him. But he has to do with the club now. If if they can form a partnership with him at centre field with young, um, with young Trayers and get a couple of forwards up front, Leave the high at six. Um, but Connor hit the nail on the head. They need one or two forwards. Well, Sean Loftus was the free taker and the go to man. But if they're relying on him to win a county title or to beat Port Tumna, they don't deserve to be there. But I do think Turlock are going well this year. There's something different about them. Now, we say this every year, but I actually think they will beat Port Tumna by four or five points. I really do. Um, if the rain holds off it'll be a nice game of hurling because you know they're two good hurling teams they really are they're two big physical teams and if anything um, Banislow it's on a Banislow isn't that right? Yeah Banislow for the evening yeah. yeah that'll suit poor Tumna you know uh, you let uh, you let Turlock in Tathan Rye a big feeler into Pear Stadium they'll run right yeah, they'll move ball um, Canning will Canning will rally the troops and he know exactly what to do and how to hold the high, but I expect Turlock to win this by four or five points. That that game obviously wets the appetite, and uh, it's it's an exciting game to look forward to. But I don't think there's for most people involved in these two clubs, um, Gord St Thomas is like this. This is this is a proper derby here, Connor. Yeah, uh, look, they've had they've gone toe to toe a lot of times over the last few years. Um, I suppose Gort probably four or five years before they've really, since they've really got any kind of um, joy out of playing them. Uh, I with, I suppose with Thomas' is missing David, uh, Bork uh, does, does bring Thomas's back a level maybe, but at the same time, I think Gort, I think the sting might be gone out of them um, from what I've seen. Aiden Hart isn't involved with them now this year. Sorry, who's that? Aiden Hart isn't involved with Gort this year. Yeah, yeah, that's right actually, yeah. Um, Seen them last year, um, yeah, just uh, that, uh, I suppose, that expectation that they might win a county final, that, that definitely wasn't hanging around them last year, uh, from what I've seen. Um, it looked, but at the same time, local rivalry, that that brings everybody up a few percent, you know. Uh, if it doesn't, you've no business being there either. Um, but I think Thomas will have too much for them, they'll have too much guile, too much uh, pace and speed. Um I, I can't I can can't see anything but a, a fairly comfortable Thomas's win there on that one. How do you see this one going, Kevin? Yeah, I'd have to agree with Connor to be honest. Um 
I can see the David Burke not playing aspect being a huge thing here. The only thing that would go for me is uh, the local derby. Um, you know, form goes out the window. I know there is no form pre-season, but, you know, the form team of the last six, seven years being Thomas's, um, Garter after winning the sevens, you know, um, I played golf a few weeks ago there with Finnerty and uh, John Commons. And, you know, John is a staunch guard man, you know, and um, he calls it his season. He knows every player inside out and he knew he knows well what lies ahead. And, you know, he reckons they can give them a go. And I think they can, but I was disappointed to see that Harty was gone down playing junior, you know. Uh, I thought it was another year. I thought it was another good season, Harty, you know. He still has the pace, the hurling. Um, He's a big, big loss to guard. He really is. Um, Harty could have been still in with the county panel last year. Um, and not to be part of his club scene this year and down playing junior is a massive, massive loss for them, you know. Because in the last six, seven, ten minutes, this is where he'd stand up, you know. He'd slot in number six there. But, yeah, like like Connor said, I, I'd be expecting Thomas is to win this, you know, six, seven points. Yeah, with that, Connor. The loss of David Burke is obviously going to be significant for Thomas's, but to get a player like David Cherry back as well is a huge boost. Yeah, it's a big boost to them. Uh, I was looking at their squad there a while ago, like, you know, um, uh, even thinking about it now after, you know, <laughs> I, I made my colours to the mast with Lockery already, but they still have pound for pound. They're probably still the best hurling team in it. If, if, if Thomas's hadn't got, gone to the well every year for the last five years, you know, they you'd probably be still picking them for a county final if that maybe didn't win it last year, you know. Um, yeah, and even with David Burke gone, you know, you can comfortably see them getting into the top four. Something have to go very wrong if they don't. Like if Shane Cooney there as well, who um, probably wasn't at his best last year with the injury, just trying to get back towards the end of the year. So he'll have that season under them as well. So, um, yeah, no, they're, 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 they're a good squad. Thomas, they're, they're, they're going to be a challenge for everybody. Um but I just think, I think Gart, uh, what about Thomas is maybe uh, levelling off and, and, and maybe there isn't a huge amount of improvement to be got out of that team from where they are. And that's an exceptionally high level that they're at, obviously. But I think Gart might be just on that downward curve from what I've seen last year. And it's hard when, when you start, when you start, when you start regressing like that. And if you don't have uh, good strong numbers coming in two three lads that are really going to push to make the team uh, year on year it's uh, it's very hard to stop that slide Group 3 then uh, forms of Cap Tagel um, Kilken Iron Mike Cullen and Lock Ray um, Cappy this year it, it's a, it's a new look Cappy team um, really when you look at some of the names there but, uh, Paul Clappy um, is in Thailand at the minute Daniel Nevins away travelling, which is massive loss in the middle of the park. But they had a relatively good league campaign, Kevin. Um, they, I think they went to extra time with Lock Ray in the uh, league final. And they will fancy their chances here beating Kilkenner at the weekend. Yeah, I'd expect them to beat Kilkenner, even with a couple of lads gone away on holidays or whatever, or taking a year out. Um, happier season campaigners. I've watched them in a couple of counties in my finals and quarterfinals in Guinea Park and oh, I'm very, very impressed with them. Just the way they organise themselves and even their coaching structure on the line, um, that everything down to a tee, the only thing they were missing was maybe just two or three um, short of a county county championship. And that's all it takes. It's a lot, but that's all it takes. Um, I, I, I'd, I'd be expecting them to come out and win this comfortably enough to be quite honest with you I know Kilken Iron they won the intermediate a couple of years ago and they're up and it's going to be harder for Kilken Iron this year now with senior becoming 16 teams now mm, absolutely and this is what they want this is why they this is why they've trained so hard to get up there and um, I seen them playing intermediate and they were way too strong for it they deserve to be up there and they're there on merit um, a lot of great work being done up there at the moment Um they had a good, they had a right good campaign last year. Um, they won't be fearing uh, Cappy whatsoever. They'll be looking at Cappy coming on the way back and and Kilkenairden on the way up. But I'd still expect um, Cappy to be winning this. You know, maybe two or three points could even be a draw. Um, there's not a lot between them. They're two totally different styles of hurlers. Um, but I still think Cappy come out on top. 
Stephen Craven there over um, Cap Tagging this year. Um, so they'd be looking to build on their league campaign really it's safe to say with the losses they got I'm sure they took great satisfaction from that and Kill can I and be looking to get off to a good start that's at um, half uh, three in uh, Dublin Park on Saturday or Sunday sorry um, the other game in that group um, takes place uh, on Saturday it's it's well look it's Loch Ray it's a team it's a team you've both backed um, to, to go the length this year and um, they're obviously taking on Mike Cullen who had a huge year last year Connor said they really did um, surprise people yeah, they were probably in one sense they were nearly, you know, they were definitely the, the most surprising team of the of the the championship. Um, you know, they they, they took they took the scalping medals in the preliminary quarter final, and um, yeah, the Mulya played them right there recently as well, and I think it was it was a, it was a, it was a good challenge between both of them. They're, they're well able, John Hardy's looking after them there again, so we all know that they're going to they're going to know their business, you know. Um, what did John Hardy man bring to the table? Uh, what's John bring to the table? He, uh, he brings a lot of things. Um, I suppose first and foremost for me, when I had him anyway, you, 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 you kind of have you'd want to go through a brick wall from just the way he'd go about things, and um, he'd give you a huge amount of confidence. He'd give a lot of players. He'd be very good one on one, and um, coaching aspect of the, of the game, and uh, you know the, the clever little body position stuff, and you know how to how to carry yourself and. You know how to break down the game and simplify it for yourself. You know, and he, you know, he, he, he's he's uh, he's unique enough, kind of an individual. He's uh, he wouldn't be a man to be in the dressing room banging hurls and you know driving everyone out through the wall with with temper, like. Um, but no, just you know, small little nuggets of information here and there, and uh, you know, you'd have you you'd be walking, you'd be walking tall, going out in the field. You know, you you, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be doubting yourself. That's for sure. And you know, you can see. You can see he obviously got that message through with the the, the Mike Cullen lads. You see, the, the, you know, might be unfair to say maybe they're playing a level above themselves last year, but you know, the, if 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 they're achieving it, fair play to them, you know. But um, John was someone I would have always liked to uh, got the opportunity to work with in my own club at some stage. I think it was mentioned here and there, but it never materialised unfortunately. But um, yeah, Hardy Hardy's a good joke. You still see Locker having too much for Mike Cullen this weekend. I, I do, I do, yeah. Um, uh, I think Mike Cullen will probably set up, you know, to, to make sure that there's, there's, they can stay in the game um, up until maybe the 40 minute mark and then try and have a cut at it. They, they might as well. They're, they're not going to, 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 when there's only four in a group like that, you know, you, you, you can't hedge your bets and hope, hope for the best. Like, so I can see Mike Cullen setting up maybe an extra man, maybe even two extra men. Try and keep the score down because Lockery have um they've a they've a very good running game they've a good direct out ball game with McManus um seeing them last year they they, they collect the ball in the half back line midfield with one hand pass and bang one hand pass bang you know straight in quick ball and proper deliveries but uh the running game then as well if they bring Jamie Ryan over around the half forward line he likes to loop around you know the the rooks and he picks up the loose ball uh, hand passed out and um, he's unstoppable really. I can't understand why he never got a, a better look in with the county this year. Yeah, he was with them this year, all right, but I think injuries really kind of... Okay. Yeah, 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 it must be something in it because, yeah, Jamie's been... He was excellent last year, but, um, yeah, Lockray, uh, for me, if... Um, you know, if you've got a wet, windy day, and, and could even things up a small bit, but I think Lockray will probably just have too much, uh, too much uh, score and power for them. Probably maybe seven or eight points. Yeah, that game in Pierce Stadium um, on, er, on Saturday evening, um, quarter past six. Uh, game in Group 4 that I'm looking forward to this weekend because when you consider the factors of this, Kevin, you have Jer Farrer who's coming 41, captain of Castlegar, still playing, and it's just an absolute credit to him how he's still doing it. But then you could have Johnny Glynn making an appearance our dad this weekend. Yeah, very true. And you have Tanya in there as well. And um there are some yoke, there's no doubt about it. And you know, he'd be one of my best. How best is friends. he how is he still playing? Well Jerry's only ever played the one court, you know, um 
if I was only ever playing hurling, I'd be still playing. <laughs> and I don't mean that any disrespect to anybody else. I would. I'd be able to play until I was 50. Because, but like, he's only ever played hurling. Um, he minds himself. You know, he likes to fight at the weekends. But he does. Um, Jared doesn't smoke. He's never had any bad breaks. Um, he's had a bad back. But I can I say it because I, I played up there for 15 years. He, he He's held that club together, you know, with a couple more. Um, you know, an absolute massive, massive club, man. And I was talking to him on the phone the other day, and like I said, surely to God, this is your last year, and I'm not going to retire in them, but you know, he says, This is the last hurrah. Um, like he's still Castle Gary's best player, that's the truth of it. Take him out of freeze, take him out of line balls. Um, even if nothing goes through him, he'll make sure it goes through him. And even myself and Durban were talking off off here beforehand. You know, Jar has one gear, one gear only, and it's Glad to celebrate it. <laughs> no, but it's true. You know that. Jar is one gear, one yeah. gear always. He's a he's a stamina. He just stays going. He glides around the field. He could pick off five or six points from play or he could pick off 15 points. You know, um he's just a huge, huge club man. But that no, this is going to be a right good game early in the weekend. You know, um, why have why have Castlegar struggled, Kevin? Mentality. I've said it before, and I played up there. Um, you know, and I don't know, was it just myself or a few more guys? And Connor can relate to this. But maybe times have changed. When we lost, I'd cry going home. I I'd be chewing the steering wheel. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't sleep. You know, um, if we won, I'd be worried to the moon. I'd want to go train them when I go home and. It's all changed. Um, and I don't know what other clubs are like, but I know in Castle Gare, it, it doesn't really matter anymore. And it has to matter. If it doesn't matter, you know, there has to be a bigger outlet. Um, and some people might slate me for that. But like, it, like, a lot of people went back to their All-Ireland wins and forget about that. Forget about the colour of your jersey. I used to say to the guys, I said, I'm not from Castlegar. Green and white means nothing to me. I'm from Ceylon. But it's the guy beside me. You know, um, it's just a mentality thing within that club. It really and truly is. And I spoke to a great servant there a few weeks ago. I won't mention his name because he's still involved with the club. Um, I have no ties to Castlegar now. Great, great admiration for the club. But I say it as I see it. There's a total, total... Um, soft, soft mentality within that club at senior level. It's absolutely soft. Can it change? I can it change? Can it change for you this Never. year? Could, could, is no, this not, year one of the years that it's going to change? No, not this year. Absolutely not. Um, no. There's, there's too many of the old dog there and there's, no, it just won't change. I. They, they might come out of the group um, I hope they have a good year for Jer's sake and a couple of more guys. Don't get me wrong, I get on well with all them lads up there. I have no chip on my shoulder whatsoever. Um, but it's very frustrating. It really is. You know, um, I see the likes of Thomas's and Mullia and even Turlock and all these other crews coming off the field and they'd be devastated. It doesn't seem to bother a lot of these guys up there. And I take a bit of slack for that. I don't really mind. It bothers Farrer, you know. And that's why he's still playing because the love of the club. But um, as in regard the weekend, it's a trick you want to call now. I hope Castle Gara win it. If Johnny Glynn comes back, you know, he's a great man at the edge of the square. He can bomb on in. You know, Tanyan is still knocking around. Um, good game of hurling. Could be a yeah, draw. Like, even Connor R. Drahan have had like a really good year last year. You throw Johnny Glynn back into the mix here. Latanyan, lean forward as well, has been a great player for. Um, on your G throughout the uh, Fitzgibbon Cup, like there, there, there won't be much between Ardran and Castle Gary this weekend. No, um, it's going to be a tight one, as is impossible to call, really. We played Ardran last year, and um, yeah, they're again, they're kind of they're a very physical, resilient bunch again. Um, and they, 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 they play a nice little brand of hurling too. They, they try and play to their own strengths, which, which most teams should do, but they actually don't. But they work a lot of ball through Fay. And um, your man Albertini as well. He's a handful at club level. He's got a lot of pace. Um, uh, I, I probably would have said Cash Gare until Kevin started talking. Maybe just about <laughs> a point, point or two. Um, Who's the ref? 
That's yeah. the big thing. If if you get a good referee, if you get a referee that's fond of the whistle, like you said, Darwin, it'll suit Farrer. If not, it, yeah, it'll go very close to it. Yeah, come down to that. I'd be sitting on the fence of this one. I've seen Castlegar a few times the last few years. Again, it's very hard to get a read in them. Um, you'd, you'd, you'd be expecting more of them, uh, especially from what they'd have on paper. You know, um, you'd think you know that we could be should be in and around uh, semi final. You know, close enough to get to a semi final at their best most years, and they just don't seem to have. Just don't, don't seem to. Have, I think they were unlucky enough last year. Did they, did they miss out on qualification by a pint or two points or something like that? And score difference, but yeah, they just don't seem to get get it over the line. But um, I would, yeah, I'd be I'd go on the fence in this one. I, I'll call that one a draw for the next day. A team that are probably looking then, Kevin, to make make that jump into the top bracket. The semi final last year, but they definitely feel like they're not too far away. And Dundreid success, even with their under twenties last year, pushed her up more all the way. Sarsfields, they're coming up against Crawwell and. Realistically, Sarsfields within their own camp are feeling here that the, the top spot is 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 here for Sarsfields. Yeah, and they're a team, I suppose. Um, I didn't give any credit to um, talking off air, and I apologise that because they're a serious outfit, great club. You know, um, Jesus, where do you start with them? Um, they'll fear nobody. You know, they're a team I really didn't give much consideration to. You know, I was going through the programme and a few bits earlier on now, and on paper, they're as good as anybody. Um, you know, the Coney's there, and Kevin had a great, great year this year. You know, Joe's still there. And winning the under 20s, like you said. Um, yeah, they, 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 they lost the Turlock in the end. They did push them to extra time, like it was. Mm. Yeah, it was, it yeah. was just, just really close last year, like. Yeah, exactly. They'll be they'll be in the top they'll be in the top two or three this year. Um up in Sarsfield they'll be saying they'll be going all the way because if we're putting Lock Ray up there, Sarsfield are putting them, themselves ahead of Lock Ray. Um you know, Sarsfield very 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 proud club. Um are Cromwell just are Cromwell just struggling then this weekend, like I don't know is he going to play, but Niall Healy hasn't been listed on the 30, but he's been listed as a non-togging sub for Cromwell, so... <laughs> He'll play. <laughs> He'll I, play. I, 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 t- I, t- I think Healy's under pressure, lads. I think, I think, the, I think the knees... Um, he got the knees cleaned out or something and d- didn't go to plan. Uh, I've seen him standing goals uh, for a, uh, a league game there against Molly a few weeks ago, and he's not going to make it as a goalie anyway, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he's some club man though he's some club man to be going in in a league match playing in goal after all he's done for the club yeah I big time yeah sure look you put him in the same put him in the same bracket as Farrah really you know yeah uh, yeah. just get scores on the board you know and yeah. uh, probably probably a kind of a dying breed of a lad himself and using clown and loads of, like you know mm. Healy wouldn't be happy if he didn't have and Farrah the same if they didn't have 10-12 points Healy probably would like to stick a couple of goals as well yeah, you know, in any game, you know, if, if they come off at five or six, did nearly, did nearly lose interest before the end of it, you know. <laughs> you can whisper in your ear, passing you. Farrer <laughs> uh, <laughs> would be saying nothing good anyway. Whatever about Healy, <laughs> Healy be any hope and he doesn't get a belt. <laughs> and uh, Connor, do you just see Sarsfields having too much for Crawl? Uh, yeah, I probably do. Um, again, Sars uh, Crawl. Uh, hard to get reading them again. Um, the um, Tumla took them last year in the preliminary quarter final. Um, they were probably going in expecting to win that, I think, at the time. Um, but Sarsfields for me last year were my dark horses for the county final. Um, yeah, I'd see Sarsfields probably winning this maybe three or four points. Um, but Croft will have a, a good fighting chance of that as well. Like uh, Sarsfields, um, they're, they're a massive club down there. That's just I think they have their four adult teams between senior and junior, um, under twenties. Uh, I was down there playing a junior game um, a few weeks ago, and the, the the setup they have down there, the pitch, yeah. like they're 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 there's they're some club guys um, for you know small East Galway kind of parishes coming together like so. Um, yeah, can't put but admire them, but for for that game on on. At the weekend, uh, yeah, Crawl, 
I wouldn't be surprised if Crawford, you know, sneaking a, a result out of it. Um, but I'd be putting my money on Tarsus. Yeah, it's Andy Cohen second year there uh, from Gort um, over um, Crowell. Um, that, that's obviously uh, great for. That's kind of all the senior championship, but we're just going to touch briefly on senior B and intermediate. Um, we're not going to go to end in depth into this section because honestly, there's just so many games this weekend. But we're just briefly going to have a look at senior B. So, senior B, uh, it, it's, it's very simple. This is how it's working. It's eight teams, uh, two groups of four. First, you go straight into a semi final, top two and top three in each group, cross play in a uh, quarter final, and then the bottom team in each group play in the relegation final, and the loser that goes down to intermediate. Group one, Mulia, Lee Meadows, Athenai, Ahaskrofola. Group two, Kleiner, Beha, Port Pierce's, Kilnadima Leitrim. Just bring you in here, Connor, because Mulia are obviously in this group, your own club. But group one, it, it does feel maybe like it is a bit stronger with the four teams that are in there at the minute. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't underestimate Kalimer on the other group. Um, uh, but yeah, um, Mulya Meadows, as, as I was saying just before we went live here, um, probably felt after the game we, we, we left an opportunity behind us for Mulya last year on that. Um, you know, so there'll be no fear of Mulya going in playing Meadows this week, this weekend. Um, I suppose last year we were, we were going in maybe with the mentality of, of you know, keeping ourselves in the game. And we did, you know, giving ourselves a fighting chance with maybe 10 minutes to go. And um, we missed two two goals of Kudos guys over the line on it. But um, I'm going to say about after riding as well, um, very hard to get reading them. We've seen them in, uh, in Lockery against Leitrim Kinnadima last year. And um, and they looked like a very good team. I think the Meadows then went out and bet them fairly well uh, in a game after that. So, yeah, it'll be... It'll be it'll be a tough group now. Um, whoever gets the whoever gets the win between Mullion and Mellows is in is in a strong position. So group two, uh, then uh, Kevin Clymer, Beha, Port Pierce's, Kilnadima. Kilnadima may be the team standing out in that group, but all, all team all like anyone in senior B just wants to get out of this as quick as possible. Yeah, get out of it and. Win it and get up again. You don't want to be in a dogfight and facing down intermediate. Um, I think Clymer are a good side in this. Um, well, she says in a park pierces. Clymer, Beha, Port Pierces, and Kilnady Malikran. Yeah. You know, Beha are struggling there now a long time. And if anyone was going to say, oh, they'll go down, you know, you waste your time. They're the hardiest club I've ever seen, you know. Um, they'll be there, thereabouts. Um, it's hard to know. It really and truly is. The first weekend they'll show an awful lot in the in the um, in the senior B. Lee Mellow's the team that you expect to make the jump straight back up. Well, on paper, probably, yeah. Um they won a county title. Like did Louis Milk with them up to last year, right? And they were, you know, won a county title how many years ago? Got to another county final. I do think that Mullia will beat them. Um uh, I know who's over uh, Ryan, is it it's gone in with Ryan O'Doyle, yeah. And they're supposed to be going quite well. Um, they tell you that I know it's in the Melos. <laughs> but um, I think I think Mully will have enough of them. I think just Mully are, they're just battled hard and that being better. I think Mully will beat them and I think they'll top that group. And did the standard bears for you maybe just a step ahead of everyone or Connor, do you feel that there's teams there along with Lee Melos? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, last year I probably would have said yes. Um, I don't like look if they pull it all together. If 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 if, if all things being equal, the the the, the their best players play very well on the day. They, they probably are maybe on pound for pound the the the, the best and maybe most balanced team. But look, there's a lot more to it than that, you know. So um, you know, Athenry, Mulya, Askerfona. None of them is going to fear playing um, Meadows. Like, you know, and look, the bottom line is Meadows are down senior B. You know, and they went down last year, you know. So, you know, you're not down there for nothing. It's as simple as that, you know. So, um, 
they, 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 they won't find it too easy down there against those three teams, that's for sure. Then just uh, briefly in intermediate, um, four groups of four, obviously the usual format here. Group one, Turlockmore, Carnmore, Silon, Anna Down. Group two, Kintormer, Rehu, Newcastle, Cambridge, Kilbacanty, Crawford. Then in group three, Crawford, Mila Gerkort, Ballygare, Avinok Moy. And then group four, Kinvar, Tina Abitanare, Onspidid, and Ballandrine. Um, just before like, we do get in, because obviously Tina Abitanare are going to be the standout team in Interbreed. They're everyone's favourites to jump back up. But Tune Stadium, one o'clock on Sunday, Silon, Anna Down. Kevin, what would that game have meant to you? Oh, Lord, wouldn't I love it? I'd nearly shock out again. <laughs> Class. Um, yeah, I, I think Cylon will beat them. I really do. Did you enjoy um, this game when, like, back playing with Cylon? Is this always a game that you didn't No, really, no, no. Um, you see, and I don't were always ahead of Cylon, really. They were intermediate and we wouldn't have met them an awful lot. No, they're just uh, right beside us, you know, but we get on great with the old um, with the Anna Down lads you know it's just when you're living next door to each other you like to think that you hate each other but you don't um, I think Cylon will be too good for them um, I was involved with Ivan Morris with a lot of them Cylon lads they were under 13, 14 a few years ago I left in one year and I even brought them up and they won the under 15 myself and Billy McDonough I think there's five or six of them guys now on that intermediate panel they got to a final last year the year before Teddy Higgins doing great work there with Liam Brady and, you know, a few more of them. And there's huge work being done in Cylon. Now, I don't think they'll win a county title. Team Navigator area, I think, or if there's any such word, stoned on to win it. I I think they'll win the intermediate this year. I think they're good enough to go up. I hope Cylon can just hang around the quarterfinals, semifinal stages for the next two to three years and bring all these guys that are 17, 18, up to the 20, 21 years of age I didn't have a cut it because I do think they will be good enough. The work that's been done down there on the is phenomenal. And I'm not just saying that giving my own club a dig out, you know, we're in North Galway and it's a football place. But if anyone has seen the place that's been done down there, uh, the grounds and the clubhouse and um, the pitches, like there's three pitches down there, two pitches, and they're still there even with young boys and young girls. So they will get their chance. But I, I do think on Sunday they'll beat Hannah down. Now, Damien Comer, you wouldn't know, he, he's not kind of racing. He's a great club man as well. He'll he, he could bring the helmet with him. He's liable for a good goal or two as well. Uh, Connor, I was just touching on it with Kevin off air with Jeffrey Linsky as well in uh, the first episode of the Power Rankings. And we ju- I was just saying to myself, has there ever been such a big appointment in the Intermediate Championship? Going through the teams, you look at Teen Average and Irie, you look at the manager, you look at Matty Kenny. Former Dublin manager drafted him. Paul Killeen's back for them this year now at centre back. It's 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 a huge huge addition, and that's why you just feel Tina are, are very likely to make the jump back up here. Uh yeah. Um, look, you, you, you have to like to, to, to give you give any club to you have a fighting chance. You, you need to have all the structures right around the team first and foremost. You know, um, um, you know, and then. Like you know, no better lads than Matty and and and, and Haji and Dave O'Dea has gone in there as well. Since conditioning, um, we had him in Mulya and he's excellent. Um, so look, they'll be doing everything right. Um, I think the I think the results uh up till a few weeks ago have been um hit and miss a small bit, but um, um on paper they will be there thereabouts. For me though, I think Airport might be the team to come up this year. Um. You know, the, seen the seen them last year and the against Climber and Climber were a good team too. Let's um, the Climber deserves to win it on the day, but of course are, are, are good lads and they've good. They're, they're, they're all the right age. They seem to be coming, um, all 24, 25 years of age. So with eight teams and in intermediate this year, and um, with the group they have, they possibly picking pick their way through it. You know, time the time the run for quarterfinal, semifinal, and final. You know, with a bit of luck, um. So yeah, if Tina and Airport avoid each other, that'd be the final for me. And um, look, it's hard to know; it's too early to say right now. But it to be, it wouldn't be a lot between the two of them on paper from going on what I've seen last year. Yeah, and there's definitely going to be other teams in this intermediate championship as well who are going to want to have a say. And uh, would 
that's all we have time for uh, on our podcast for today and um, a massive amount of games to get through and tw- to, um, I make it 20 games uh, this weekend that take place across the senior, senior B and intermediate so huge games across Friday, Saturday and Sunday and all the various uh, venues and it's, there is going to be some titanic clashes but uh, that's all we have time for uh, today on the podcast a massive thank you to two lads for coming on.